In the previous video, we looked at creating input actions using the input action editor. In this video, we are going to look at how to write code to control a third person character using an input system asset, getting him moving around the scene using either gamepad or keyboard and mouse. I have created a new blank project in Unity 6. Go to Window and open the Package Manager. Ensure that Input System is installed from the Unity registry and using at least version 1.9 or above. In this series I am using version 1.11. If you want to follow along with this project, install Cinema Machine version 3 and you can find the asset pack to install from the video description below. If you have already downloaded the asset pack from a previous video, reopen your project to follow along with this video. If you do not see the Input System Actions asset or you accidentally delete it, go to Edit and Project Settings in the Input System Package section. Input System Package version 1.8.2 and above allows you to create and assign a default project wide action asset with predefined input actions. Double click to open the Input Action Editor. We will be using the Move, Look and Jump actions to control the character. Go to the Scenes folder and open the Playground Scene. We are going to move the player armature using the rigid body and access the animator and bind the speed parameter to the Move Input Control, which will then determine when the player is idle or walking. Create a new script called Player Walk. Add the using namespace for the input system. Add a public variable to hold the input action asset. This gives us access to all the actions in the asset. For each action we want to use, create a variable to store them. The actions we want are using a vector2 data type, storing the x and y axis movement of the left and right gamepad sticks. Create two vector2 variables to store these values. Create variables to store the animator and rigid body components. Then create variables to set the walk speed, rotate speed and jump speed. To use an action map it must first be enabled in the onEnable method. While enabled, all the actions in the action map are actively monitored during the input system update logic, which by default happens every frame. Then in the onDisable method disable the action map if this character is switched off or destroyed. In the await method find the actions using string references for the action names and pass these into the input variables. Then get the animator and rigid body components. In the update method we set the move amount and look amount by reading the vector2 values from the inputs. We can use an if statement to check if the jump button has been pressed. Is pressed is used if a button is held down and can run across multiple frames. Whilst press this frame detects if the button has been pressed and will run for just one frame. Whilst release this frame detects when the button is released and will run for just one frame. We will use was press this frame. Run a function called jump. Create the jump function. Then add rigid body force at position on the y axis using the force mode of impulse. This will get the character jumping. Access the animator and set trigger of jump to play the jump animation. In the fixed update, run walking and rotating functions. The walking function sets the animator speed parameter to match the move amount's y axis. The rigid body is moved using move position and moves the character forward or back with the move amount on the y axis multiplied by the walk speed multiplied by time dot delta time. Create the rotating function. We only want to rotate if the player is walking, so an if statement checks if move amount y is not equal to zero. Create a float to store the rotation amount which is equal to look amount x multiplied by rotate speed multiplied by time dot delta time. Create a quaternion for the delta rotation that is equal to quaternion dot Euler with 0 on the x, rotation amount on the y and 0 on the z. Set the rigid body move rotation to rigid body rotation multiplied by delta rotation. Drag the player walk script onto the player armature. Add the input system actions into the input action slot. During play mode we can move and rotate using gamepad left and right sticks or mouse and WASD or arrow keys and jump using space or button south on the gamepad. Let's add a pause menu and switch between action maps when the pause menu is on. We will add a pause action in the input actions editor. Click the plus icon to add a new action. This will be an action type of button, 
that I will call pause. For the binding, click on the path drop down and we will listen for a button press. Press the start button on the gamepad and it instantly finds it from the list. Click to set that as the pause action input. This is a gamepad input so choose gamepad from the control scheme. Click the plus icon to add a second binding. This time listen for the enter or return key on your keyboard and set the control scheme to keyboard and mouse. Switch over to the UI action map and do the same, adding a pause action that has bindings to the start button on gamepad and enter or return on the keyboard. Click save asset to save the input system actions asset. In the player walk script add variables to store the input actions for the player pause button and the UI pause button. Then add a variable to store the pause display menu. In the await method, find the action of pause from the player action map. Because we have two actions with the same name, we need to specify which action map it belongs to, followed by a forward slash and a string reference. Do the same for the pause in the UI action map. In the update, run a function to display the pause menu. Create a function called display pause. We check if the pause action player button was pressed this frame. Switch on the pause display. Then we find the action map of player and disable all actions within it. Find the action map of UI and enable all actions within it. Now we have switched over to the UI action map. In an else if, check if the pause action UI button was pressed this frame. Switch off the pause display and disable the UI action map and enable the player action map to switch back. On the player armature, drag the UI document object from the hierarchy into the pause display slot. During play mode, we can control the character. Press the start button or enter on the keyboard to switch on the pause menu. Press start again to switch it off. Now we are switching between action maps when the pause menu is switched on or off. And that brings us to the end of this video. We have looked at scripting for the input system to get the third person character moving and jumping. We have looked at the recommended way to write code for the input system. However, there are several ways you can work with the input system that can be tailored to your workflows. In the next video, we will add mobile controls to allow players to control the character on mobile devices and switch the mobile controls on or off with touch inputs on the mobile screen. To find out more, click on the link in the video description below. Thanks for watching.